Welcome to this week's GV Bounce. I'm Mark McGowan. I'm Hannah Driscoll. Uh, this week's going to be a special edition. Um, as everyone knows, it's, it's interleague, uh, the best of the best. Goulburn Valley trying to retain its number one ranking in Victorian country football against Mornington, Peninsula and Apean. Um, I guess the, the biggest talk has been the injuries. Um, the the Goulburn Valley's depth is really going to be tested. Um, a lot of key players out. Michael Roberts being the latest um, only yesterday with his shoulder. How do you think that's going to affect them? Yeah, it's certainly a big change from last year. Looking at last year's team, there's now only six players left. So who are they, Mark? Yeah, we've got them actually here. There's, with Michael Roberts, he obviously played last year, but um, him being the latest at fallout, it's now only Paul Newman, Nathan Beck, Jason Morgan, Tim Luby, Ryan Butler and Paul Colbert. So they, they, they take on extra responsibility, um, as with some of the veteran players like the, the Paul Kirby's, the, the Link Wellingtons as well. As I think they're a couple of the key players you think you're going to be feature quite strongly this weekend. They certainly are. Paul Kirby will have a big job in the ruck this week. He's taking on uh, Frankston YCW's Ash Eames. Uh, that'll be a big matchup. Last year, of course, Kirby was unavailable and there was a bit of speculation about who would take on that ruck position. But this year, along with Link Wellington, uh, they should have, the two veterans should have it pretty well sewn up. There are backups, of course, with uh, players like Guy Campbell in the mix. But uh, yeah, we have to see how the Tap Boys handle this challenge. Yeah, I mean, they, as, as you said, they're going to be really key players. And another couple I think are going to be really important are Tim Luby, um, obviously best on, on ground last year playing in defence. Um, he, he's played forward for Sheppard United the last two years, but I'd expect him to slot back into defence again. And just being a training during the week, he really established himself as, a, I guess, a vocal leader in the side. And you can tell how, how much he loves the format and, and how much, the, I guess, the guys have got around him. Yeah. Uh, but even the likes of Paul Newman as well, he'll captain the side for a third straight year. Um, he's been under a little bit of an injury cloud um, with, his, with his calf. He's missed the last two games for Kai, but he's declared himself ready to go. He trained on Wednesday, yep. um, and he'll be another really, really key focal point up forward for them. Um, another guy I think is really important is, is Liam Ogden. Yep. Um, he's one of the young guys. Um, he joins sort of four other sort of kids age 22 or younger in the side, but Liam Ogden, he's got a fair bit of pace, bit of X factor about him. Um, get him on a wing and he can sort of really break a game open. So mm -hmm. we're expecting him to have, you know, among the young kids be, you know, a really major factor. And of course, one of the other key players I mentioned earlier, Guy Campbell, last year's big country captain, of course, didn't play interleague last year. This year we're expecting him to play forward, but he, as I mentioned, he has uh, got a history of playing the ruck. Last year he did play a bit in defence, so he really is the all rounder, so we'll wait to see. But as said, we would be expecting him to play forward this year. That's where his Rochester coach, Peter White, has been focusing his talents this year. Yeah, now obviously the, the MP and NFL, a lot of stars. Um, that's been well documented, but a couple in particular, Cranbourne teammates, Mark Holt uh, and Justin Berry. Um, Ovens and Murray, we'll, we'll certainly remember them from <laughs> last year. They, they were the two that combined to kick the match-winning goal um, to knock O&M down yep. to number five. Um, which is certainly not where they like to be. They still think they're the best, even though Golden Valley's number one. Absolutely. Um, but <laughs> but uh, obviously, uh, GV's number one, but a massive challenge this week to just to retain that. I mean, we almost go in underdog. Travis Ryan, the coach this year, has mm -hmm. almost admitted that they are the underdogs. But um, look, in this format, it's not always about the best players. It's how much you buy into the concept and, and how much you enjoy this and the enthusiasm. So and I think that's there, just from being at train the last three weeks. Um, so obviously we'll, we'll be back in them, we expect them to yep. win, but I think it's going to be a close one. Yep, it could be interesting as well with the weather, uh, which could come into play, obviously it's a wet day today, there are expected to be a few showers tomorrow. But of course we have got the uh, curtain raiser in the morning with the under 18 team starting at 11 o'clock. Uh, it's an interesting mix, there is 14 of the players that have been named have already played senior matches this year, which is uh, not really surprising given the talent. But there are also six bush rangers listed and another one in emergencies. Uh, Coach Jason Wells did say that the weather and the conditions came into factor when he was se selecting the teams. So I'll have to see how that plays out tomorrow morning. Yeah, and that, that basically brings us to an end this week. I really encourage you to get out and watch a bit of interleague footy. This is the best of the best. Uh, it's going to be cold, but get out and have a look because you're really going to enjoy it. So hopefully we see you there.